here we go. Approach number one, I'm above half throttle, and full flaps. And we're going to start throttling it down a little bit. Power's still on. Keep the power on, keep the power on. Keep the power on. And set the power now. And there we are. Okay, let's, let's do it again. Flaps up. Here we go. Above half throttle. Half flap, half laps. Make my turn. Final full flaps. Throttle back a little bit. Keep the power on. Just a little bit of throttle back. Keep the power on. Slide to the ground. Just keep flying it. Just keep flying it. And touchdown. There you go. All right. Okay. As soon as those wheels hit the ground, you cut the throttle. That'll keep it from ballooning, bouncing back up. Okay, take off. Laps up. Coming around. Okay. Three. So above half throttle, half flaps, Three. turn final here, base and final, flaps down, final. throttle back a little bit, let it fly to the ground, guys. Got to keep the power on, fly it to the ground. You cannot dead stick this plane, it will not work. You might get lucky a few times, but you're going to break it sooner or later. So fly it to the ground, fly it to the ground, fly it to the ground. Flaps. Make the base final full flaps. Throttle back a little bit. Keep the power on. Fly to the ground, guys. I know it's hard to see the tree line there, but you know we're getting it there. Flare it out a little bit. Oh, okay. So that wasn't the best landing. Yeah, I, I didn't flare quick enough. Caught me off guard. Yeah, I don't know if the lights will help, but I'm going to put the landing lights on, the wingtip lights. Maybe that'll help see it coming through the trees. We'll see. Okay, off we go. And around we go. Flaps up. Actually, let's put the flaps all the way down now on the downwind. Now, make sure you, you keep your speed up when you make that turn because if you stall it, it'll roll out of it. So don't, uh, don't. Don't get too crazy too soon. Make sure you can make this turn. And once the wings are level, you can start throttling back. Yeah, the lights aren't really showing up. Yeah, oh, there they are a little bit. And there you go. Hello again, welcome back to Hangar 51. Um, the video you just saw coming into this with the five landings in a row um, was just a prelude to what I'm going to tell you. Um, if you want to watch the entire flight, that was a 5000 battery, the smart battery from Horizon, which I do not recommend you fly this plane with. But I used the 5000 and I did uh, on that particular flight. There were 20 landings, one go around, and um, I still had four, I'm sorry, 3.96 volts in each cell after 20 landings on that battery. So 
when I tell you I have over 200 landings on this airplane, um, when I'm getting 20 to 25 landings per battery pack, at least, um, times 10 batteries, I've had way more than 10 batteries through this, uh, it's easy to say I've, I've got well, well over 200 landings and I haven't come close to damaging the landing gear or even coming close to, you know, banging the prop. So, in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with the landing gear on this airplane. Um, it's, 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 it's the way you're flying it and Horizon's partly responsible for that. So, let me say right off, I'm, I'm going to, a little disclaimer here. Um, I do not work for Horizon Hobby, but I love their products. I buy a lot of their products. I have a bunch of their buying and fly planes, and uh, uh, I buy a lot of stuff. And I'm a legend member at Horizon. I spend a lot of money there, but I am not an influencer for them. I don't get free airplanes from them. I don't get free product. I don't get a paycheck. Uh, so... Every, everything you see on my channel, when I review it here, it's it's me sharing my love of this hobby for 48 years now. Uh, when I buy something like this, I review it so that you can make a better educated decision whether you want to buy it or not. And I do that just for my love of the hobby. I, I do it for you, the viewers. Uh, I, I don't do this for the money. Now, I do get some money from YouTube, but it's pennies, guys. I'm a small guy on YouTube. You've got to be in the millions of viewers and subscribers to make any real money. I'm not even close to that. So I don't do it for the money. I just do it for the love of the hobby. And, and I enjoy doing this YouTube stuff. So so that's my whole premise of why, why am I doing this and what can you get, what, what can you take out of it. So so just remember that I'm not, I'm not an influencer for them. I'm not a, I, don't, I don't work for them. I don't get paid from them. Uh, so whatever I say now, good or bad about the plane, is just coming from my heart to you. So I just wanted to make that clear because I have a lot of good to say about this plane. And I have a little bit of bad to say about Horizon about this plane. And we're going to just cover all of that. So so what do I like about the plane? Uh, I love the, the lights, for one. I mean, it's just beautiful. There's, I think there's 14 lights on this, and you can control... You know which lights are on from the radio which is really cool and um, I, I just love the airplane so um, so uh, there's tons of detail on it I mean we've got these antennas there's supposed to be an antenna on top of the wing there I don't put that on because I'll just break it off or I'll stab another airplane with it you know sometimes those kind of bits I don't put on an airplane because they just get in the way um, so I, I don't mind leaving a little detail. I mean, I can always, for display, put it on, but I'm not going to glue it on because it, it, it's just going to lead to trouble down the road for me. So, but the detail and everything, even all the decals that are on this are, are exactly like the real one. I mean, they went through a lot of detail and then a lot of trouble to make this look like the real Draco. Uh, but it's never going to fly like the real Draco. Okay, so um, it flies beautifully. It's a great flying airplane. Um, it's got an under camber wing, guys. It's not even a flat bottom wing. It's an under camber wing. So this plane's not going to fly upside down. I mean, it will, but it don't like it. It's, it's a fight to keep this plane upside down because of this under camber wing. It's, it's designed for maximum lift. And when you take a maximum lift wing and flip it upside down, it's a maximum, you know, drive it into the ground and crash uh, wing. So, yeah, you don't want to fly it upside down. You know, you can, but you're going to have that down elevator really down, and the plane's going to be flying, tail dragging down, almost to the point of stalling. And it just, don't even try it. It's not, it, it's not designed for that, and it, it's not going to do it well. You know, everything can fly upside down, but some do it well and some don't. And this is the maximum. I've never had another airplane that has an under camber wing like this. So, uh, and I can tell you when I tried to fly it around upside down, you know, I, I made one lap around the field and started laughing. I said, okay, that's enough because it's, it's just not fun. <laughs> it's doable, but it ain't fun. 
So, uh, but it's just a beautiful airplane. So, um, you know, I, I can't fault anything about it in the design and the construction. It, it's well done. Uh, even the landing gear is well done. But where they, now here's where they, they screwed up. This is what Horizon, this is where I feel they screwed up, okay? The tires they put on it are super hard. I mean, they're not solid foam like some of the planes that other people have put out that use the regular injected foam like the airplanes made out of to make wheels and tires out of. It's not that. It's rubber, but it's hard rubber. It's a very, very hard rubber. It, it's, it's almost impossible to even, even squeeze them. They're so hard. Um, so, bad call, you know. You know, Mike Pavey runs big bush tires on his plane that only had like six or eight pounds of air in it. You know, and believe me, I want to tell you, that's all, you know, that's what they're running. My drag, I, I drag race cars, and my drag tires only have eight pounds of air in them. You know, they're gigantic slicks, and you run about eight pounds of air in them. And they, do they look flat? No, they don't look flat, but it's, you know, it's the volume of air, not the pressure of air, okay? So, but, um, yeah, these things are way too hard. So, uh, and I haven't done it yet, but I'm going to do it. These are the tires from Hobby King for the Grand Tundra, okay? Uh, they're slightly bigger than the, the, the tires that are on there. Um, about, a, about a half an inch bigger, but they're super, super squishy. I mean, these things are just super squishy, okay? So, this is the tire that should have been on the plane. You know, why Horizon didn't put a tire like this on, I have no idea. But, again, this is where I say that Horizon screwed up and set you up to fail. Because if you're trying to fly this like the real Draco and land on those hard tires and the and the springs, okay, the shock absorbers. They're not shock absorbers on here, okay? There's no oil-filled dampening here. There's no dampening. It's a pogo stick. So you hit on this hard tire that doesn't give any. You compress those springs, you know, coming in like this and then dropping it down. The springs compress and just catapult the plane right back up into the air. And and then it stalls, noses over, hits the prop, breaks the prop, and breaks the landing gear. It's a heavy airplane, you know, so you, you can't drop it on the ground. It, it's not going to take it. The landing gear's not designed for it. Now, if it had squishy tires and oil-filled shocks to dampen the compression, maybe. You know, but the way it came like this, no way. So, so that's why I say that th this is part of the problem where they screwed up. So I'm going to put these tires on from the Grand Tundra. You get these at Hobby King, and uh, they look great on the plane. Uh, listen, I'm not the first guy to do it, um, but I, I had bought these tires o over six months ago because I knew when I finally one day got a Draco, I was going to put these tires on. So I had already bought the tires. They're hard to get. You got to buy them when they have them because they sell out of these tires so quickly. Uh, they're really hard to get. So when I finally saw them in stock, I got them. So, uh, so I'm going to be putting these tires on, and I'm also going to try to find a uh, a set of oil-filled shocks. Okay. Listen, that's not new technology. Been racing RC cars for f over 40 years, and they, uh, they've had oil-filled shocks way back in, in the 70s, early 80s. So uh, why couldn't they find a set of oil, uh, at least, I don't think all four of them need to be oil-filled. We don't, I don't know that you need that much dampening, it depends, but you know, maybe they could have used just two oil-fields to dampen it, the other two just to hold it up and look scale, and it they would have been fine. Um, so, yeah, I, I, it definitely, I'm going to try to find, and if I find some oil-filled shocks, I'll let you know what I find. But if you've already found some that are working, please comment at the bottom and share with all the rest of us what you found that works, you know, as, as an oil-dampened shock, because the plane really needs it. Uh, it doesn't have to have it, but it, it definitely, um, it, it, it definitely would be better with it. So... So those are the first two things wrong with the plane. Okay, so next, they've got the motor brake on. Now, if you're flying Horizon Hobby products, 
and, and especially if you're flying in safe, um, none of your planes have a motor brake on. Okay, they're they're all what they call windmilling. Okay, if you cut the throttle all the way back to try to make a dead stick landing, your your prop's windmilling. Okay, which is more drag. This one is set up like a feathered prop. The brake comes on, the prop stops, just like on a full size. Back in the war, the B-17, if they had a motor go out, they would feather the prop. What that means is the prop blades, instead of being like this on the front of the plane, you know, they, they rotate them in like this. It's a variable pitch prop, okay? So they rotate them flat like this so that they stop, okay? So they're not windmilling, you know, because it's less drag. Well, they did the next best thing with this. They can't, we can't adjust the props, but they stopped the prop. Know, by putting a motor brake on it, they stop the prop, so it doesn't win them, okay, because it's less drag. So you're coming in dead stick, like you do with your other Horizon planes, which is the wrong way to land, guys, and I'm going to get to that, but you're coming in dead stick with the prop windmilling, so you've already got maximum drag, and you're coming up short, so you throttle up, and the plane immediately goes to power because it's already spinning windmilling, okay? So this one's not. This one's coming in dead stick. Prop is stopped. And, and now you say, oh crap, I need more power. And you bump the power up a little bit. Well, you haven't bumped it up to power. You've bumped it up to windmill, which is more drag. So as soon as you do that, the plane slows down even more and tries to stall and fall even faster. And by the time you catch it, it's either already hit the ground or it's hit the ground hard enough to bounce and catapult it back up into the air, then you cut the throttle, and it falls on the ground, and you break the prop and land. Okay, so one of these scenarios is probably how you broke the landing gear on your airplane. You know, you stalled it because of, because of the brake, because you weren't paying attention that the brake was on. And I know most people would think of that, you know. Again, this, I don't know why Horizon set this plane up to be so different than all their other bind and fly planes. I mean, I know why they stopped the prop because of the reverse, but, but uh, you know, they didn't have to do it that way. There were better ways to do it. Um, and they should have advised you of that. You know, they should have said, listen, if you are doing this, you don't want to do that with this plane. Um, or you want to at least bump the trim up on the throttle before you take off. I would bump it up till the motor starts running and either leave it there or click it one back so that it's, you know, you're, you're going to, it'll windmill when you come down, not, not break. Okay. Um, but that's the wrong way to land. So I'm not going to get too crazy into that. Um, so what you need to be doing with this plane, and I, I have plenty of videos that you can go watch on my channel, um, how to land your airplane. And you got to fly it to the ground, guys. You got to keep the power on all the way to the ground. You cannot dead stick it. You can, guys. I know some of you guys are, oh, I do it all the time and it works fine. Listen, you might be getting away with it and on other planes that are stronger that can handle a, 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 a basically a, a controlled crash landing, but this one cannot. And that's why you're going to break the landing gear on this. It's not because it's weak. It's because the plane's heavy and you cannot crash land this one. You know, you, you got to fly it to the ground, which is the way you should be landing all your planes. You keep the power on, and you fly it so it's still flying when it touches the ground. Not that it stalled and fell on the ground, okay? And I, I have a video where I actually demonstrate that. Um, you just go look at my landing 101 video where I'm flying a, the, one of the harder planes to land. Um, and I purposely drop it on the ground a couple of times and then I fly it to the ground and show you the difference. And uh, it, it's important that you fly it to the ground, especially this airplane. So make sure you keep the power on. Start bringing the power back slowly. It's going to land almost at half throttle, guys. You know, you're going to have to keep about that much throttle in it. You know, and just, you're going to have to just keep manipulating the throttle and the elevator. Because not only do you need the power to keep it flying, but you need the prop wash and the airflow over the elevator to maintain control of it, okay? Once you slow this thing down, you lose elevator authority because there's not enough wind going over it. So if you've got the prop off, 
there's you've got no prop blast going over it. You're not going fast enough to have wind going over it, so you lose authority. So you keep pulling back on the stick, and you're not it, it's not recovering because you don't have any air. So it's another reason why you want the prop on. You've got to have the prop blowing air to maintain elevator authority, okay? And then that's why I tell you to run the battery back quite a bit. I have mine an inch from the firewall, the black firewall that's in there. It's an inch back from that. I would start there and then push it back even farther if uh, if you're still having trouble, you know, maintaining that that final uh, approach. Uh, you know, move it back even more. Um, you're, I don't think you're going to get it tail heavy. You know, the plane is going to fly even if you push the battery all the way back. Um, and it depends on what size battery you're running, how far you want that back. But you know, I run the 3300 an inch back. Okay, so a bigger battery, a heavier battery, you might want to push back even farther. But that way you keep the prop running, you keep the prop blast, the airflow over the elevator, so you maintain elevator control. And that's the biggest problem with this. Once you slow it down, you lose the elevator control, and you cannot stop the pitch over crash landing because you don't have any authority on the elevator to stop it. So that's why you got to fly it to the ground, guys. Just keep the power on, fly it to the ground. Okay, and then the last thing that Horizon did with this plane, again, I don't understand why they did it, but they have the safe so turned down on this airplane that I did an inverted dive and hit the switch to put it in the safe, and it lost 50, at least 50 feet of altitude uh, before it recovered. I don't fly this plane 50 feet off the ground, okay? I mean, I'm 20, 30 feet at the most, most of the time. Way below treetop level. You know, I keep my planes close to the ground. I don't like flying up in orbit. And uh, the plane would never recover. If I had it in trouble that low to the ground, it would never recover. Most of their planes, like an Apprentice, or my, I have a, uh, a Knight Timber X, you know, it snaps back. I mean, it, literally, it is so violent to correct the airplane. Um, that it's, it, w it will technically save the airplane. I mean, you, you, you'll save the airplane with that. And then the, you know, if you're trying to land with the safe on, it, the wings are locked in flat. They're, they're not, you know, this plane has a lot of that dead zone. It's almost like it's running expo. You know, if the wind blows the wing up, it's not going to snap back. It's going to just lackadaisy come back, you know. So if you're trying to land and a gust of wind blows your wing up in safe, you know, you're going to have to correct it yourself. If you're going to wait for safe to correct it, you're going to be making a go around because it just takes forever for this thing to roll itself, rights itself, and to, and to lock it. Most of the, everything else I have that has safe in it locks in, you know. I mean, it's, it, it, you know, if the wind blows it, I mean, it's, it's kind of like jerky a little bit, trying to keep wings level. This is nothing like that. They, they turn the, the safe down so so far that it, it it just it's almost pointless to have it honestly I mean if you lost orientation and you were high enough you could flip it into safe and maybe save the airplane but um, it would never work for me so um, and I don't fly any of my planes in safe anyway I only put it on this one so I could review it for you I wanted to know what it would do um, I, I the only plane I have safe uh, active in all my binder fly planes is my Timber X because I use it as my trainer. When I'm teaching somebody to fly, I, that's the plane I use, and uh, that's the only plane I have the uh, the safe even active in. I, I don't bind them in safe because I, I don't use it. Okay, so that's my opinion of what's wrong with Draco. The 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 the, the four main things are the, the tires are too hard. The shock absorbers are not shock absorbers, they're just springs, uh, so it makes for very bouncy uh, landing gear, you know, it, it has no dampening to stop the dampening. Listen, here's a perfect example of it. If you have an RC car that has oil-filled shocks on it, you know, an off-road car like a, like a RC10, one of the race-grade associated products, or a, a LOC. You know, it has, you drop the car on the ground and the car just hits the ground 
compresses and, and that's it. It doesn't bounce. It just, you know, poosh, and, and, and it's there. You know, because of the oil field the dampening. You know, it's not going to do this. You know, this bounciness, that, that's because there's no dampening. There's no oil dampening. You're never going to get this plane to land like the real one with shock absorbers that are going to do this. It, you're, you don't have shock absorbers. You have springs only, which makes for this, this bouncy. And that's never going to work. So it's never going to land like the real Draco. And that's why. Now, could we make it do that? Maybe. You know, if we can get some oil dampened shocks on here and get them, you know, the right, the right amount of cush and everything, we would have a much better chance of making it fly like the real plane. But the way it's set up like this, with these hard tires, the springs, the prop on, uh, you know, stopped. Listen, you never saw Mike Patey coming in with the prop stopped. You know, he's got the motor on. You know, he's holding the thing in the air with the motor on. You know, bringing it down almost in a, in a high alpha maneuver because he has the suspension to compress and, you know, dampen the, the airplane. We don't have that. And then, you know, and then the safe technology of this, you know, listen, the first thing I would do if you have the capability is to reprogram the receiver and turn the safe back up to a very demanding, quick responding, you know, safe recovery and not this lackadaisy setup that Horizon put in it. Again, I have no idea why. Um, there's, this plane is just too different than all the rest of the products they sell. You can't fly it like all the rest of the products they sell. Okay? It's just not going to work. Um, perfect example of one of the planes I really love is the Valiant. Okay? The, the Horizon Hobby Valiant is, is a wonderful airplane. It flies fantastic. And when I have, at, at one point, I put safe in it just to test it. I also put Crow on that particular airplane to test it. Um, you know, it's very light. That airplane weighs nothing. It's super light. And the landing gear that's on it is a fixed aluminum that's pretty damn strong. So, you know, you do a controlled crash landing with that airplane, you're not going to break it. it. It doesn't weigh enough to really hurt it. It's, it's just too light. So even a controlled crash on that airplane that you might be considering a good landing it's not really a good landing, but you're getting away with it because that airplane can handle it. This airplane cannot. So, another thing, you know, Horizon and their, one of their promotional videos for this plane said that it's not a beginner airplane, it's not an intermediate airplane, it's a advanced to expert airplane. But they didn't say it like it was, like they meant it. You know, they said it so casually that they were almost telling you, yeah, nah, don't worry about that. If, you, if you're not an expert, you can still fly this airplane. And you probably broke your airplane and, and think it's the plane's fault. Now, if you're flying safe, you're not an expert pilot. You're not even an advanced pilot. I wouldn't even call you, depending on what level of safe you're flying in, you're not even an intermittent pilot yet. You know, I, I have trained so many people that by the end of the day think they're Chuck Yeager. Okay, because we're flying around in safe the whole time. And then I take them back out one more time and I turn the safe off and they're screaming like a little schoolgirl. Oh my God, turn it back on, turn it back on, turn it back on. Because they can't fly the airplane. Okay, you know, safe, if you're flying around in safe, it gives you that false sense of security that you're, you know, Chuck Yeager, best pilot in the world, and you're not. I'm sorry, you're not. And uh, you need to learn to fly without the safe. You need to learn to fly it to the ground. Okay, that, that, that's when you can uh, really look at this airplane. I tell my guys, they always ask me, when, when can I move up to a jet? <laughs> they want to go from an apprentice to a jet. And I'm like, you know, the jet lands faster than the apprentice can fly. Okay, you're talking about an airplane that went, you know, maybe 35 miles an hour to when it's doing 100. And it needs to be doing better than 35 to land. And you think you can make the jump from an apprentice to a jet. <laughs> It's not very realistic, guys. I know a lot of you have done it. I don't know how successful you are, but I'm betting you probably broke some airplanes. Um, you know, there's no reason to stop flying The Apprentice until you can fly it around upside down. When you've mastered The Apprentice and you can fly it around inverted the whole flight and have total control of it and don't have to flip it and save for any reason, 
then you're ready to move on to the next level, whatever you want it to be. At that point, you could fly, okay? Until you can fly your apprentice around inverted, you're not there yet. That's just my feelings. You know, if, if you don't agree, that's fine. But I've been doing this a long time. I can tell you that if you really want to be a pilot, you need to be able to fly an apprentice around inverted. And until you can do that, I wouldn't consider you even close to being a pilot big enough or good enough to, to, to be buying this plane and expecting miracles. Okay? Now, everything I've just told you is going to help, and maybe it'll make you a better pilot, safe or not. And that's fine. I hope I am being helpful. I hope you're going to really try. Go, Please go watch my videos on how to land. You know, I've done so many of them. Um, I was in a challenge, you know, it was a worldwide challenge that one of the YouTubers put up, and I entered the contest, and I won it by a country mile. I mean, it wasn't even close. You know, the, the second place guy was over a thousand votes behind me. It, I, I mean, I just blew it out of the water. I didn't expect that, honestly. Um, I, I was I was very pleased. I was happy that I, I won it, but... I never expected to win it by that margin. It was, it was even for me, that was, you know, I was very impressed with myself. Okay, so, <clears throat> believe me when I tell you, I know what I'm talking about. And, uh, go watch my videos, and you, you'll see me fly every kind of airplane, a jet, military, twin engine, single engine, civilian. Uh, I, I, I even did it with a UMX turbo timber. And I did five landings in a row. I was able to land the plane on its wheels, on grass, and not flip it over. And not once did it come over and hit the prop. I landed it, rolled it, and took back off five in a row. Okay? Even a UMX turbo timber. Okay? Which is very hard to do because, you know, they, they tend to want to nose over because of the, you know, just, it's a very, very light and the wheels on the grass don't roll that well, and it's very easy to flip the plane over, but I did it without flipping it over. So please go watch my videos. Watch what I do. I'm talking you through it the whole time. I hope you really get something out of that, because that's why I did it. I did it to help you guys learn to land better. Safe or no safe, it'll work. You just gotta follow my instructions, and it'll make you a better lander, okay? And that you have to be able to do to fly this here. If you, if you can't land it with the power on, you're, you're going to break it. Sooner or later, you're going to break it. You're going to break prop. You're going to break it. Listen, some of the best pilots I've seen on YouTube have broken this airplane. It's, it's not an easy plane to land. I'm telling you. It's not. Um, so, you know, I, I, I'm not trying to be negative to you. I'm, I'm just trying to give you the reality of it, that it's a tricky airplane to land. And like I said, if, if you're not an experienced, advanced, experienced pilot, uh, this is not the plane for you. So, so that's my that's my my whole feelings on the airplane. I love it. I'm glad I bought it. Um, you know, I would love it just to hang it up in the shop here if I never flew it again. You know, just because of how cool it is, all the lights. It's Mike Patey's design and all that. Um, so, I I love the airplane. Now, now I'm going to sound like a salesman for Horizon. Listen, it's $100 off right now. Um, I don't think you're going to see a better deal than that. I mean, they, they did a free hat a couple weeks ago, a few weeks ago. Now they're doing $100 off. Uh, if you want to take a chance that they're going to do one better, the next better thing, if you remember back in the day, they, when the Havoc was out, they finally threw in a free battery with the plane. You know, to, to sell them, and then they did the same thing with the EC-1500. So you, at one point, you could get the airplane and a free battery to fly it. And it was a, it was a 5050C battery. I think it was a 50C. It might have been a 30C, but I think it was a 50C with the Havoc. And um, that's the next level. If, if they don't sell enough of these with the $100 off, then the next level is going to be the free battery. Now, if you want to take a chance that they're going to do the free battery thing and wait for that, because that's coming if they don't sell these out. But at $100 off, this is a pretty good deal. You know, $529 for this airplane is what I think the plane should have been at originally. Uh, you know, $499, you know, would have been uh, a, a real good number for this airplane. 
five ninety nine, you know, was too much, and then they bumped it to you know six twenty nine. So, you know, six hundred thirty dollars is is too much. So they've got it on sale for hundred bucks off till the sixth. If if you were thinking about a Draco, now's the time to get it. You know, and uh, even if you can't fly it yet, but you want one, get it now and don't fly it now. Wait till you're a better pilot, so you have it at the hundred dollars off, and then you'll be able to fly it one day. Just don't fly it right away. Wait till you're a better pilot and then fly it. But you know, at, at five twenty nine, I think it's a good deal. So. I would take advantage of it if, it if Draco was one of those you wanted or you were on the fence about it, um, you were worried about the landing gear, don't worry about the landing gear. The landing gear is fine. Just do what I say, watch my videos, learn how to land the plane, and you'll have no problems with this airplane. So, so that's my feelings on all that. Um, so, listen, I, I just started a second YouTube channel. Now, they're both called Hangar 51, spelling the word 51. The difference between the two channels is hanger spelled with an E and hanger spelled with an A. When I first started my channel, that hanger with an A was not available. Somebody else had it. It's gone now. It was available, so I grabbed it. So now I have both. So make sure when you subscribe, subscribe to both channels. There's nothing on the A one yet, because that's the brand new one. I mean, this week new. Um, so there's practically nothing on that channel. But if you go to the hangar spelled with an E51, there's hundreds of videos there. So go watch all of those. Make sure you subscribe to both channels so you don't miss any of the content. I have an idea for the new channel. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna see how it works out before I tell you what I'm gonna do, <laughs> just in case it doesn't work out. But I have new plans for the A version, the hangar with an A, and uh, that's coming up as soon as I can implement it. Yeah, so there probably is going to be different content on the two channels. Um, so make sure you subscribe to both so you don't miss any of the good stuff. And um, I think that's it. I think I've got everything. If you, if you're, The only last thing I want to say, guys, is if, if, you're, if you're not a fan of Draco because you don't know about it, you haven't watched Mike Pagey on YouTube, listen, he documented the entire process of making this airplane. And it's good to watch. I mean, it if you're not really into full-scale aviation, you may or may not like it, but he has the entire build from start to finish documented. I think it's in 14, maybe, actually I think it's more than 14 videos. Um, it's good watching, the man is a genius, and it's impressive to watch what he did to make this airplane. And then, of course, he did Scrappy too, if you haven't seen that. So I highly recommend you go watch those videos, they're great. And um, uh, and that's all I've got. Um, check check the comments the, below the, the info below. I'm going to put the, the the Ivy Crazy guy, whatever I can't remember his name, but you know his his landing gear upgrade. I will probably order just because why not? You know it's not very expensive. I don't think, and I think it's a good upgrade. Uh, I think down the road. Uh, I don't think it's going to break. I think it's going to wear out. I think that brass fitting going through the carbon fiber is going to wear out. I don't think it's going to break. I think it's going to get wallowy. You know, it's going to wallow out the hole and, and get loose. So I think the upgrade will definitely stop that from happening. So I probably will buy one of those kits. If you think you need one or if you think it's a good idea to get it anyway, I recommend it. But... Um, it doesn't need it technically, but I, you know, he already went to the trouble of making it and it's not that expensive. It's a pretty easy install. So, hey, why not? I'm probably gonna do it. Um, so that's that's my video guys. I hope it was helpful. I hope you'll go watch my other videos. If you're one of these guys that is not landing, flying it to the ground, go watch my videos, watch them all. You're gonna see me do it with every single airplane. The technique is exactly the same. It doesn't matter if it's a jet, a prop plane, high wing, low wing, twin engine, it doesn't matter. You fly it to the ground and it will land beautiful. You'll be, you'll be greasing every landing. So go watch my videos. You'll, you'll enjoy them. You, I hope you get something out of them. And uh, it, like I said, if you're on the fence about a Draco, now's the time. You know, it's, it's at, at 100 bucks off. The only thing better would be the free battery. 
I don't know that they're going to have enough of them to do the free battery or not. Um, I just I don't know how well they're selling. I know they're not selling well, uh, but but we'll see what happens there. But I, I would if I hadn't already made a deal at a local hobby shop to get this one the week before they put them on sale, I would have bought it on sale now. But I had made a deal the week before with some horse trading at a local hobby shop, and that's where I got mine. So I didn't take advantage of the hundred dollar. But I, I actually did a little better than the $100. Um, but, you know, I, I, I think that's a great value. So if you were thinking about a Draco and you were on the fence, now's the time to jump over the fence and get it. I think the price at 529 is pretty good. So I would get it. If you're not ready to fly it, then just leave it in the box until you are. You know, it's not going anywhere. Once you have it, you have it. So, so that's my show, guys. I hope you, uh, you know... Please subscribe to both channels. Um, like me here on YouTube. Like me on Facebook. And we'll catch you on the next review. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.